Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to take a look at Angie by the Rolling Stones. Now this is um, actually multiple guitar parts going along. The guy's usually doing a fill while the other guy's playing uh, the chords or whatever. But we're going to try to put it all together um, to make it sound as close to the album as possible without having two guitar players. So let's start here with the intro. It's pretty similar to the main riff of the song, the chorus of the song that goes for probably 85% of the way through the song. But he adds a little bit, a few nuances there that we're going to cover. The first thing that's different is he starts with a harmonic at the fifth fret, I'm sorry, the fifth string, twelfth fret. All right, then we come down, we start strumming an A, A minor, sorry. Now, towards the end of that, you're going to put your pinky at the third fret on this high E string, and then release it back down to the open string. So that's why you're strumming. Then we take it to this next chord, which is going to be picked across instead of strummed. Um, you call that kind of arpeggiated picking. So what we're, I'm going to be fingering this in a this way for a reason. You'll see in a second. Where we're going to have my third finger here at the fourth fret on the G string, the first finger at the third fret on the B string, and then the high E string open and you're gonna pick first the low sixth string then you come across and pick the third second first back to the second back to the third now the reason I figured it that way is the next thing you do is you put you change the bass note from that open E to the fourth fret here on the sixth string And then you continue picking across this top three strings, or sometimes you'll kind of strum them instead. All right, so whatever feels comfortable to you. So, so far we have. All right, then we have a G sus four chord, which is just a bar across the first uh, and second string at the third fret with your first finger. You're gonna have the third finger at the fifth fret on the D string and then your pinky at the fifth fret on the G string. Now we're going to pick across those two. So he does that, just holds the first note on the D string and then just pick three, two, one, two, three, four. Pick, take that down two frets to the first fret to make it an S sus four chord. Strum those four strings. And then release it, that sus note to the regular major, resolve it. So we have the pinky lift up and your second finger now takes over on the third, fring, third string at the second fret. So we have... So after you strum those, the sus4 to the major, then you start picking from the top note. Uh, just pick down first, second, third string. This is kind of a random picking pattern he does here. Uh, then you're going to pick up your second finger. Let that third string be open. Leave the other two fingers there, but pick up. So you're picking the fourth string, open third string, second string, back to the open third, and then to the fourth. So we have... Then you're going to come to a C major chord, but instead of playing the C major chord straight from the beginning, keep your second finger off and pick the chord, strum the chord, and hammer on that note, the second fret there on the D string to get to our full C major chord. Now when he gets to the C, sometimes he'll pick across it, sometimes he'll kind of strum it. Alright, so whatever, you know, you want to mix this up as the song goes. And then we get to the ending of the part, which is taking your second finger here to the second fret on the A string, then the D string open and G string open, and the first string, I mean the second string, first fret. Just pick across those four strings. Alright, so from this G suspended four. Alright, 
right, so that does it for the intro. Um, now, <clears throat> the main part of the song comes next when the vocals come in, and this is the part that you're going to hear most of the song. Uh, you can consider it the chorus, um, and it's very similar to the intro, a little bit different. Let me play through a version of it here. So we have a lot more strumming instead of picking across strings. We have a little fills in there. So we start with the A minor. Then the main fill of the song, which happens just about every time, is you're going to have the fifth fret barred across the second and first strings picked four times. Then the third fret across the first and second string. Ended with a fifth fret on the G string. Now he kind of starts picking that harder as he goes. And he'll time that differently through the thing. He'll go into that fast or he'll kind of hold it. All right, it's all about dynamics. Um, what you want to maybe do is when you go to that riff, try to keep that low, see I'm keeping that string ringing, the open A string. Let that ring as much as possible. So you have some kind of foundation since you're, you know, if you're the only guitar player, you don't have a guy still strumming that A minor when you go up to that fill. All right, then we get to the same chord we did in the intro, but you're not really picking across it, you're starting to strum it. So you pick the low string, then you just pick, just kind of strum those top three strings. Now he doesn't add the fourth fret again throughout the song. So that was just in the intro. The rest of the song. All right. Now we go to that same G sus4 as the intro, but we strum it pretty much most of the song. Sometimes he'll pick across it. Like I said, he repeats these over and over and he kind of mixes it up from time to time. If you want to add that low note in there, the low G with your thumb. And just mute the fifth string with your either your thumb or your tip of your third finger. Then take it down to that F, sus4. Resolve it to the F major just like we did in the intro. Alright, then we have now this little fill that he does in here. We pick up the th second finger again to um, on that. <clears throat> Third, the G string, and we're going to pick the first, this first fret, the second string, and the third string together. So you have the open G string and the first fret on the second string. And you're going to hammer on that second fret on the G string, then back, open again, and then the you gotta pick that fourth string at the third fret. So we have. And then down to that C with the hammer on that too, as well, just like in the intro. And then the same ending as the intro. So, verse or the chorus one time through. then you just keep repeating that, that part. All right, now we have another part of the song which probably I would consider a verse. Um, but it starts here. All right, so what's going on there? We're gonna start here with the same, a, a G chord, a G major chord, kind of play the Hendrix way with your thumb down here on the low E string of the third fret. Pick 
bit five, four, and three here on the second, third, and fourth strings there. And bar that first finger across the top, two strings. All right, now he's gonna make it a G add nine chord by putting your pinky here on the fifth string. I'm sorry, fifth fret on that top high E string. All right, so we have that, starts with that, strumming that to D minor, to A minor, to C major. Now you're gonna go back to, you're gonna go to this F major, add nine chords. So it's just like the chord we started with, but here at the first fret. Then you're going to come up here back to the G to end it. Now what you can do with this chord and uh, by fingering it like this, it allows you to do a lot of kind of playing around with some melody notes on top. So that's what he's doing a lot of times in it. It's kind of the Hendrix style of approaching these chord shapes. Um, you can play the pinky on the 5th fret and release it down to the bar that you're doing at the 3rd. Same thing on the second string, or the third string, release that sus down to the two like we did down here on the F. So you can just mix and match those things. It's kind of fun to just kind of mix it up. <clears throat> so usually he'll end the part doing that, or sometimes he'll just go to this G, which is just a third fret on the low E, third fret on the high E. Mute that fifth string with the bottom of your third finger, but all the other strings ring open. And they'll just kind of throw in this first fret on the second string every once in a while. So we got. All right. Or you can replace that last G with that open G do that sometimes because he plays that part a few times in a song. But whenever you do play it though, it only happens one time through those chords and it goes straight back to the... Alright? One more part in the song uh, we can consider a bridge. It happens at about the 3 minute and 32 second mark. Um, um, and it starts with a D minor chord. go from the D minor to the A minor three times. So it's the same chords, but we're just doing a little different orders here. So the D minor to the A minor three times. You'll only see this hear this part once in the song. Then you go to C, then that F, that F uh, nine chord, or just a straight F if you really don't like the sound of that F add nine, and then to that open G chord. All right, so that's all the parts of the song. It's pretty simple, but you can really create, recreate the sound off the album with just one guitar. Um, as long as you kind of get those fills. There are little fills in the song that you'll hear. That you hear like little stuff like that. Those are really not essential. They're just kind of noodling. The, the gist of the song is the chords that you just went through and the major fills. All right, so have fun with it, and be sure to keep mixing it up as you go through it. And I'll see you guys at guitarlesson365.com with some more songs very soon. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.